Okay. 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 Well, uh, good evening, everyone. <coughs> um, my name is Howard Coulter. I'm the uh, interim superintendent here in Cape Elizabeth, and uh, I uh, am going to call this meeting to order. It's a special meeting once a year as we get ready to uh, appoint people to um, various committee responsibilities to include the chair and vice chair of the school board that happens <coughs> tonight. And uh, this is Tuesday, December 12th, and I would uh, call this meeting to, to order at 7.01 and ask that everybody please join in uh, for our Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I would, at this time, um, entertain um, a motion for the election of school board chair. I move that we elect Susanna Mizell hubs as school board chair. Are there any other nominations for chair? Then I'll say that those nominations uh, are closed and I'll ask for a vote. Uh, was there a second to that? I will second. Not that we need one for elections, actually. You don't, you don't need one. Um, so, um, okay, so all of those that are in, in support of the motion to elect Susanna as the chair, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven. That's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank the you. meeting is yours. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, but before you do, <coughs> is this the time when we do? Oh, no, we, I guess we wait for I another vote get, before I the need dramatic. Have another seat available. Right, okay. Okay. So, well, okay. May I have a motion of, uh, I mean, a nomination, please, for vice chair? I nominate Heather Altenberg for the board vice chair. Any Second. other any other nominations? No. Okay. All in favor? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> so funny, sir. Thank you. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. So moving on um, to the appointment of committees, may I have a motion? To uh, committees? I would like to nominate John Volts for finance chair uh, and Elizabeth Seifries as policy chair with Nasser Shear and Hope Straw as members of the policy committee. Any other <laughs> nominations? <laughs> Any other names? No? All those in favor? <coughs> May I have a nomination for the committee appointments? I would like to nominate um, Hope Straw for PATH General Advisory Board, uh, uh, John Volts and Kimberly Carr for Student Wellness Committee, Nasser Shear for Technology Steering and Hope Straw for Transportation Appeals. Uh, buildings and Grounds, I would like to nominate uh, Kimberly Carr. And for Negotiations, I would like to nominate Hope Straw and Elizabeth Seifries. Any other nominations? No? All those in favor? Moving along to um, advisory committee, may I have um, nominations, please? Yes, I would like to nominate John Voltz and Nasser Shear for legislative <laughs> liaison. Um, and for dropout prevention committee, Kimberly Carr. Uh, for calendar 2018-2019 academic year, Kimberly Carr and myself, Heather Altenberg. And do I nominate you? I don't need to nominate. Do I still need to nominate Susanna? Mm -hmm. 
and nominate uh, Susanna Mazel Hugs for the Town Comprehensive Plan 2019 Committee. And one more, the Spurwink Building. And we're adding on to it uh, the Spurwink Building Committee, uh, myself, Heather Altenberg, and John Volz. <laughs> Any other nominations? All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, moving on, number two, adjustments to the agenda. None. We'll move on to three. Uh, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion? I move to approve the school board members' minutes. <laughs> Excuse me, do I have to go through all? You can just say as listed. As listed. I second. Mm -hmm. okay. All those in favor? Okay. Comments by student representatives. Representative. <laughs> Hi everyone. So Allison's sick today. Um, she wasn't be able. She wasn't able to make it. But I just have a couple really short updates um, about sports and extracurriculars mainly. So um, <coughs> the boys and girls basketball teams had games on Friday. Um, those th those were their first games of the winter season, and they lost both. Unfortunately, boys and girls lost. Um, but they played Greeley, and Greeley is very good and very competitive in basketball. So that wasn't anything that they were really upset about. Um, boys hockey had a game on Saturday in Gorham uh, at USM and they won, so that was exciting. Um, speech and debate, we had a meet in Poland on Saturday. Um, it was a Nutcracker Invitational. Um, debate did really well and so did speech. Um, the awards were actually cut short because that was the day we had a snowstorm. So we got um, three four rounds in before lunch, and which is usually you do two rounds before lunch and two rounds after, but we did all four rounds before lunch and then we're on the buses by two um, and home by three-ish, and usually we get home from Poland around eight, so that was a big deal. We left at 6.45 in the morning, so always really fun, leaving before <laughs> the sun comes up. Um, and mock trial is the big, big news um, of this week, month, year. Obviously they won their eighth straight, um, state tournament Very so that's impressive. yeah incredibly impressive they're an um, unbelievable team they have some incredible incredible talent um and they will have they will go to nationals in may so that's the next step for them mm -hmm. um and lastly the robotics team had a meet at Caldale high school <laughs> on november 18th i believe that was their last meet and one of our team one of the robotics teams from cape um, place first and one of them won an award for outstanding design so those are yeah that's it really thank you emily yeah of course Drive home safely okay thank you. are you when sure it, oh yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, please okay. <laughs> okay thank you thank so much you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you so just curious where are these nationals where do they meet um, so for nationals, I think this year it's in Nevada, um, and the whole team, usually it's during um, the weekend of prom, so the last two years the students who've gone to nationals for mock trial have actually had to miss prom, but this year I think it's being changed because seniors only have two weeks of STP, so prom is being moved so that mock trial, the mock trial participants won't miss prom. That's so, nice. mm -hmm. so it's in great. May in Nevada. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Have a great night. You too. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Drive safely. Thank you. Okay. Um, number five, comments from public on the agenda items. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, moving on. Thank you. <laughs> number six, communications. A, we've got the budget review process. Um, Catherine is not here. May I speak to this? Yes, so, um, you see in your um, packet a proposal from Catherine about the budget season. And what she's done is taken some dates that um, are some workshop nights that you have coming up um, starting in January. Uh, and then below that is another little box, and it's, it's dates that are set with the, with the town council. The dates in that lower box for town council are, are firm. Those are dates that the town uh, must meet and they're scheduling. So we we need to be sure that we honor that and are prepared for those dates. The dates above in the upper box um, are a bit problematic. We've already identified topics for the January and the February uh, workshop. The January is a meeting with architects, uh, which we hope 
um, are, are well attended. We hope to also have that filmed to talk to uh, the board and have a conversation about what they're seeing and thinking about renovations to our schools. And then in February, the meeting is dedicated mostly to hearing from four or five of our employees that went to a training in how to respond to a <coughs> crisis or an emergency in a school, a new way of thinking about that called ALICE, A-L-I-C-E, and, um, and the, our employees are going to come and talk to you about that. And, but we're feeling as if we think it, it has a place in our response plan that until now we haven't really thought about. So it's, 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 it's um, de again, those two meetings are kind of are booked right now. So we need to find new dates and, uh, and, and to include a half-day budget workshop. And I just don't know if, um, if you want to have that. It doesn't, it could be at a, what, what, at a date and time is convenient for you all. It doesn't have to be um, exactly from five to eight. I mean, it could be a morning meeting, an afternoon, an evening. It's, it's you all to figure out what works for you. But it's an opportunity for us to really have a lot of time to converse about, explain, and and and, and discuss the budget. Um, rather than having these short periods of time for an hour and a half to two hours, gives us more time to get into some real conversation. So we hope that we can find a day for that. So maybe maybe tonight's not the right time for it, but sometime soon we need to try and find some dates and then put it in our calendar. Okay. I'd like to just advocate for keeping the half day or the extended budget workshop because although it was long and it can be hard to listen and absorb that long, I think it was incredibly valuable to hear all departments so you get the big picture and see the, everything together so that as we go forward with question and answer, right. we have a full picture. <laughs> right. Elizabeth, you're suggesting though on a different date. You're not different date. Okay. Yeah, maybe like February sixth and March sixth or okay. something like that. Are, the, are those Tuesdays? Those are Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Um, next, we would have the principals updates. <coughs> since the weather's horrible, the principals are home. Um, next is. The, on the agenda under communications is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act application. Right, Ms. Yes, please. So, well, um, we receive around $43,000 from the federal government through the state um, to support our school system. Um, and those monies that are dedicated right now to Part, paying for what part of one of our teacher's salaries who works with, with children that um, need additional support in mathematics at, the, at Pond Cove. There's money spent on a, part, a, a contract with what's called the Great Schools Partnership and working with our, our teachers and administrators on implementing the what's called proficiency-based education. And I believe the rest of the money goes toward supporting um, um, consultants that come in and work with our teachers on how to effectively work with children that um, need additional support and guidance, I think, uh, perhaps on, a, uh, on an emotional and a behavioral level. So that's how that money gets, gets spent at $43,000. This year, they're starting to require us to have um, a proposal and that is developed with the input of, of a lot of people. Um, one way of going about that is to form another committee. Kathy felt that we didn't need another committee. We largely know how that money has been spent and we think it's working well. And so she's met with groups of people within that in small, either one-on-one -on -one or in small groups and talked about these. And the, so that's, um, it's not, I think it's a stretch to say that it's been a, a formal committee which is not exaggeration, is that she received feedback from a lot of people that are on that list. So that's kind of what it is right now. Great. Thank you. Which brings us now to the superintendent's report. Okay. So, um, let me see here. Well, the first thing I want to mention to you is that 
I received a notice recently from one of our teachers named Joni Hewitt. She is our English language learner teacher. She resigned effective uh, the 8th of December, which was last Friday. And um, fortunately, we have an employee in our district <coughs> who is an ed tech. Her name is Marlene Potter, who is a certified teacher. And one of her credentials is um, English <coughs> language learners, which is kind of amazing to me that we have somebody here with that credential. But she was interviewed for that job temporarily to fill us up for the rest of the year by Jason uh, from Pond Cove and Kathy from the central office. And they felt that she was very qualified for that job. Um, again, just to get us from, from here to the end of the year, that job will be posted and certainly um, Ms. Potter would be encouraged to apply, but we'll interview as many qualified candidates as, as we can and fill that permanently for next school year. But we, we, we aren't losing that. These are not easy jobs to, to fill. So fortunately, our students aren't gonna really miss, uh, a, there won't be a, a big gap for them in terms of services. So I want you to be aware of that. Also, the State Department of Education is, is um, doing what they can to promote cooperation and collaboration between districts in Maine, in part to be more efficient, and in part to save some money, and in part to, I think, get people to think more as regions than individual districts. And they've come up with these grants that are called Regional Service Center Applications. <coughs> And I guess that, if, if, I, if I understand it correctly, that if you don't apply for one of these applications, that you could lose some of your funding. And if you do, um, you're at least not held, you aren't going to lose anything. And if you are awarded one, you may gain something. Um, only around, less than 30 districts actually put forward an application to cooperate. We, started uh, very small with, um, with Scarborough. I spoke to their superintendent, Julie Kuchenberger, very nice person, by the way, and, and she suggested that maybe Scarborough and Cape continue to acknowledge the shared relationship we have for food services and purchasing and staffing and training, but also maybe add in our custodial for training, um, and for supplies, a lot of money we spend on cleaning supplies and for paper products and so forth. And so maybe, so she and I, it's really she did almost all the work. Uh, I think I said yes. Um, <laughs> and so we put in an application. And um, then today, we received an, a notice from a larger group in the area. Um, referred to as the Southern Maine Regional Service Center. And we received notice from Katie Haas, who is the superintendent in Kennebuck. And a number of districts, something like 12, have come together for those exact two um, areas of concentration and asked us if we want to join them. So we're meeting with Katie sometime next week Julie and I, and it's very likely that we'll join up with that group. It would enhance our chances of getting funding, and we might do a better job of, of getting some real savings. I, I, I question, on such a small scale, what we're really going to save, but maybe with 14, 15 districts together, maybe we would get a, a, a better break on pricing. So I just want you to know that um, if this goes forward, I'll come back to you. You would need to apparently do a, 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 a vote to um, approve of this relationship. And I would do that at your next meeting. So that's kind of where that is. But Thank you for that. You, you're very welcome. Uh, so, <laughs> let's see. I would want you to know that we are doing our best to continue to fine tune our emergency response plan when there's an emergency in our schools. We've been doing what some people call these tabletop exercises. Um, we're, we're meeting and we're, we're sitting down with administrators and with police and next week we're bringing in somebody from the county emergency response program to join us 
and we go through a hypothetical situation and talk about, okay, if this were the case, and we just point to somebody and we say, okay, this is what you, you just heard what you think of gunshots outside, what do you do? And we have um, a plan, we critique that, we have cell phones, we have a drill mode. It's, so we're doing another one coming up soon. I'm a high school, I'm not going to talk about what that is right now, I don't want to give any ideas. But, um, so we're trying to go through real possible scenarios and, 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 and have people feel more comfortable about what to do, how to use technology, and how to get into their proper role should these things happen. Um, some of us are meeting weekly right now to prepare for those monthly meetings. So there's a lot of effort and time going into this. Um, administrators, school nurses, uh, a lot of people are working hard to, to get this right. And we're in much better shape right now than we were a year ago, but we don't have it fin finalized. But these meetings right now feel very valuable and people are feeling better about what they would do actually running through these situations. So I want you to be aware that we're doing our best to really improve our planning on that. Um, we continue to have a shortage of bus drivers. It's a very serious situation. We um, are doing our best to adjust schedules. There's a real possibility that we will not have enough drivers if any one of them calls in sick to do our, our regular bus run. I mean, right now we're down a one full-time driver, meaning full-time year-round. Um, we're down that, we're also down part-time drivers, and we're down with temporary drivers. We just don't have people. And Perry keeps trying to encourage people to come in, offer free training. Um, perhaps part of the answer is to look at what we pay, though I don't think that's completely the answer at all. But, you know, I'm not Somebody saying there's not... There's a shortage everywhere. Right, it's a, it's, a, it's a very serious problem nationally. But I just want you to know we're going to start planning on the possibility <coughs> that we could be... I mean, if one of our drivers right now was to call and say, I can't come to work, we are... There's nowhere to go right now to fill that bus. We have to drive, have somebody drive that bus. Mm -hmm. So, if that happened, we have to look at doing an alternate bus run that would take longer and with fewer buses mm -hmm. to get, so we need to have the kids and the parents know what that is, the, the schedules, right. and, and, and practice that. It's unfortunate, but um, I think we have to plan. So just be aware of that. Okay. I also want to mention to you, this is the last thing I'll say, is that next year our school district is going through what's called a special education audit. And every so many years, I think it's like every five, the state comes in and they just go through your records, your files, the interviews, teachers, parents, they look at students' IEPs to see if there were any deadlines missed, any programs or promises that weren't provided. It's a very serious and thorough and it's a healthy thing to go through. Well, they're going to come in this January and meet with a group of um, our teachers and perhaps some administrators and just explain what they're going to really be looking for when they're here next year. And Jessica Clark said that if any of you find that to be of high interest, that it would be it would certainly would be welcome to attend and just to kind of know what they're going to be doing when the when the audit kicks in next year. And again, that'll be sometime um, in in January, I think late January. And she has the dates if you if you have any interest in that. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Howard. Yep. Uh, on the emergency plan, I know a number of people are sort of just following it. We're, we're planning to have a pu public update and sort of let people know about what that plan is. And I know particularly people were um, interested in making sure we understand how to interface with social media that's happening, particularly during an event. Right. Um, and the, yeah. And yeah. Our plan is to have something public to present you and and the general public, uh, and, and obviously parents, um, this very year. But one of the things that we're going to say and, and write is that we're asking people to uh, resist racing to the school and coming over to pick up your children. We need people to just stay home and let us figure out what to do and how to get kids to you. When, when parents come in in droves to get their children, it blocks the road 
for the police, for the fire, and for us to get our buses in. So the tendency is for students to text their parents saying, come get me. Um, and the parents, understandably, want to get over there and help their children and help their neighbor's kids, but it, it adds to the chaos. So we're going to be saying in here, here's what we're asking you to do. Either stay home or we'll tell you where to go and when. But yes, we've got plenty to work on in terms of communication, and we, we, we know that. Yeah. That's the issue that come up before. I just wanted to <coughs> yeah. know that we're, head, we're headed to sort of answer that public and say, this right. is how we do it. So right. right. Yeah. Now, yes, can I ask you a question too? Sure. Yeah. Uh, in reference to the ELL, um, do you have the number of students who are in the ELL program right now? And also, I, don't, we, I don't have. And, and there's a school, and have you guys, or the school uh, has done demographics of kids who are not in school yet, but will be coming to school? And the question is, is one ELL teacher sufficient for all three schools? Yeah. So the answer is I did not have those numbers. Um, I believe right now that our total number of students enrolled in our schools is nine, but I wouldn't want to be held to that. And um, I, do, I don't believe, I'm not aware that we have um, the numbers of students that we expect to come in over the next few years uh, but I can I can ask Kathy, who is close to this, at your next meeting to try and answer those questions for you if you want to know what that is. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to new business, may I have a motion? I move we approve the reappointment of Smita Santi, MD, as school health advisor, pursuant to Title 20A, MRSA Section 6402-A. A second. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Item 7B, may I have a motion? I move that we consider to approve the following policies as presented uh, on the agenda. <laughs> Does that suffice? Yeah. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Heather, Kimberly, are you able to just, I, Heather, I mean, uh, Barbara did a really nice job at the first read, but um, for our new board members, maybe just a quick overview. Yeah, um, the only ones that I would like to speak about right now are the, um, the medication to students and the medical marijuana in schools. And um, we spoke, and Kimberly, please feel free to add in if I've forgotten something, but um, we spoke extensively with the nurses in um, the schools, particularly in the high school, um, to, to come up with a very clear plan. And in regards to medical marijuana, the idea is that a parent is the one that brings in the medication. It is not done within the nurse's office, it is done um, in some some room, some space in the office, uh, um, and we didn't want to designate specifically um, in case you know if we had uh, if we had put in policy that it had to be in the principal's office. Well, what would happen if principal shed was in a meeting and stuff? So we left a little bit of wiggle room there. But the nurses definitely want to have no part. They're not supposed to have any part with that administration. Children are not, students are not supposed to be uh, holding it or having any contact with that. Um, and I thought that was a really good, clear process for that um, that policy. Uh, and for administering medication to students, there's a lot of talk about the different forms that need to get filled out and saying that they just really don't want students to have medication on them um, and that they want to be able to hold on to medications. And there was a lot of conversation about what happens on field trips. and. Uh, just really thorough discussions about where that um, where that basic policy may find holes and what do you do in those situations when you are off campus or if you're at a, uh, a situation where you're sleeping over someplace. Um, they did say that the, um, so that's what I'm remembering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, great. Thank you. Um, so I think we need all those in favor? 
renewable. Thank you. Uh, next is item C, which doesn't need a motion, right? We just um, list that policy GBGAA dash R um, is up for first read only. It's bloodborne pathogens. Is that something that you all were working probably pretty extensively with the school nurses on? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it I'm just guessing. <laughs> right. <laughs> they own this. Yeah. Fingerprints yeah. are all over. Yeah. <clears throat> and it looks pretty thorough. Yeah, but that one. Um, it looks pretty thorough. Yeah, we did spend a lot of time in discussion of that one. And uh, then the, I think the nurses worked on it some more and came back. Yeah. So are, are the changes, um, I, I feel like I might have read somewhere, are they, were they based on suggestions from the main school management? Like there, there, was a, um, there was a basis for the changes, right? And they were based on changes to the, coming from the main school management association? I think the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And I also think that there is a, a, a school nurses association mm -hmm. that offers Suggestions for updating all these policies. So I think it was a combination of the two. Okay. Okay, so next on the agenda is item 7D. May I have a motion? I move that we approve Keenan Erickson for indoor track assistant for the 2017 2018 athletic year. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I know this is fine. <laughs> um, next is item. Um, boy, this is just a <laughs> consideration of the new calendar for Cape Elizabeth 2018-2019, uh, first read only. Okay. And uh, Kimberly and Heather are on that committee. I don't know if you want to. Say anything at this point, or do we just want to put it out for public sure. feedback? I think um, when we had some, it took a little less time, I think, to come up with this calendar than it did last year. And I think um, one of the big pieces of discussion was based around um, early release days and professional development. And we decided, having had so few actual days where there was early release at the time of creating this calendar. Um, it was back in November when we were finishing up the meetings that we decided that it was premature to try to make any kind of changes. We need to go through this year, see how it goes, and follow up with the discussion next year once we have more input and more information. Um, I do think that uh, many of the teachers are uh, taking advantage of it. Uh, there is some leeway as to how they're doing it. Sometimes, for example, the foreign language department opted not to, uh, I believe it was go K-12 on the K-12 opportunity that the rest of the uh, disciplines were doing and they chose a different paradigm and Kathy is giving them a little bit of leeway to find the way that uh, is working best for them to proceed right now. But it's been overall heading in a good direction. So we just want to keep that moving ahead. Uh, we had some discussion about uh, <clears throat> possibly starting before Labor Day, and we opted against that. And we're going to, uh, this, this calendar is offering the beginning of school after Labor Day. There was discussion around um, how we have to meet the days with PAS. So PAS is Portland. Arts and Technology Institute, and we uh, are only allowed, is it five Howard days five that are just days. That are dissimilar days? We're at four, I believe. We are. Um, so we're still under the limit with that, um, which is good. And the teachers still are very um, wanting to have time in the schedule to have conferences during the day. They do not want to move conferences just to the night time. Uh, they find it too much for the night, and so we're still holding on to some of the day time for conferences. 
I think the big uh, change this year, which so many people I'm sure will be thrilled about, is we've tried to make November much less broken up. Um, and so we've got the Thanksgiving holiday, we have, um, and we are asked by the town to not have uh, school during election day. And we decided every other year that will be important. And on the off years, it's not as important, but that's being used as conference days. We also came up with the realization that it doesn't have to be the same days necessarily for Pond Cove Middle School and the high school. That it doesn't all have to happen on the very same day because, for example, uh, the Pond Cove teachers wanted a little bit later date for conferences and the high school teachers want a little bit of an earlier date. So that for the earlier dates, if there's something happening with the schedule and they need to change it around, they can do so after conferences. So there was a lot of, uh, it, it's not a huge change. I think the biggest things you'll notice is November is not so choppy. Um, but it was, it was a very, uh, it was good conversation again about trying to maximize classroom time for teachers but also respect the idea of what needs to happen for this K-12 curriculum and for the professional development. So that's where we landed. Is there anything else that you Yeah, I would add? just add that um, Jason uh, Mangiarides, the Pond Cove principal, was going to take on um, the task of kind of looking into um, if there's a way that we can offer some child care support on the early release days mm -hmm. for, um, right. for Pond Cove so, students. Oh, that's great. No. Through the combination of potentially, because uh, Principal Shev was also there as well from the high school, saying that maybe some of these high school mentors could come down, but that it's probably mm -hmm. not a good idea to have just the high school students. So a combination of high school students and ed techs helping to support that uh, child care, right? Yep. Yeah, I think there had been uh, parent concern about that, so this was a, an effort to hear the uh, parent concerns and, and try and alleviate the situation. Um, and I feel like there was one other thing I was going to add, but I don't remember what it was. So I pause right there. Mm -hmm. I just I just wanted to ask um, who was involved in the committee this year? Last year, I know parents were involved. Were they there were parents involved again well. this year? Yeah, yeah. parents, well, administrators. Good. Howard was there, two board members, Kimberly and myself, and um, Kathy Stecker was there. And I believe teachers from all buildings. Teachers. And teachers from all the buildings. So let me just mention one other thing. Um, just for parents who are planning their, their, their summers, the, the, this plan would start school the day after Labor Day. So um, we want to be sure people knew that, that up to that point, um, that's time for family to figure out how they want to spend their, their, their summer together. And the last day without any snow days would be the 12th of June. So for every day that we lose, you simply add a day, one for one. But without any snow days, it's, it's Wednesday the 12th. Thank you for the work on the calendar. I wanted to say that I noticed I could see right away that there was some work put into November and I think everybody's appreciative of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thanks for going back and doing that. I think that we heard, especially last year, that um, everybody was appreciative of um, bringing the tradition of having the calendar come through a committee. <coughs> Goes a long way. So thank you. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, next is uh, committee reports. I'll say. Spurling. Oh, sorry. 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 Go ahead. I think Spurling <coughs> building committee met in the process of starting the, the final draft recommendation. For me, that's underway. Yeah. We haven't seen it yet. Right. So that's we're wrapping up soon. Mm -hmm. so, I think that was the only committee. You've been active. So. Um, I've been on buildings and grounds, and uh, that's super fun and super exciting. Uh, we had a meeting uh, with a few different plans concerning uh, the cafetorium in the Pond Cove and Middle School area uh, and possibilities of how to make that 
a better utilized space uh, for lunches and for the auditorium, the, the theater place, and to make it work for all students, not just middle school, but Pond Cove, because they have different needs. Um, and so we're in the very beginning process of that. There were four drafts. I think unanimously we all enjoyed the last one, and so they're going to tweak it, come back to us with more detail on that. And heading into some conversations later this week about uh, the high school and the athletic area down by the gym, not the gym, the um, training center, the weight room and all of that and trying to see how we can bring that a little bit more up to speed where um, it, it just serves our needs better. Right now it's way too tight. We're going to have a workshop on, on this in January, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Presented right. by the architect? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll just comment on uh, the Comprehensive Planning Committee. We met just recently last week and closing up for now the draft of the housing chapter, um, coming to a near close of the draft of the transportation. Um, and next Next meeting will be, uh, we were supposed to do it this past week, but the person who runs the survey um, couldn't come, so we're gonna do it at our next meeting in January. Okay. The superintendent search committee will have a final meeting on Thursday at three o'clock. I believe we are in the lower level conference room. And I'll take this opportunity also to plug to the parent and community members to join us on Friday evening from 6.30 to 7.30 to meet and welcome our superintendent finalist, Donna Wolfram. Anyone else? Is that it? Uh, any school board agenda requests? Not certain hope. Um, if you have any in the future, you can feel free to email myself or Heather or Howard. Um, the same with the, the public. Sorry. Okay. Uh, next announcement of upcoming meetings. The comprehensive uh, plan, the next meeting, a regular meeting, will be set for Wednesday, January 3rd at 7 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room. The agenda again will be transportation, possibly public facilities, and most definitely the survey results. And then on uh, January 25th, I believe it will be here in Town Hall, the, the time is to be determined is going to be a public uh, forum, oh. which, which I really hope we can all attend. What's the date? January 25th. And it's here? I believe it's going to be here. Okay. I don't know where else it would be. Time is to be determined. It's okay. probably going to be six or seven. Um, for policy committee, as I'm just moving into leadership on that committee, um, I'd like to honor the schedule that sort of just came about pretty recently. So um, policy committee will meet um, on January 23rd at 5.30 p.m. and we'd like to continue to meet in the high school library. We, um, I believe, it met for an hour and then um, the workshop started, so it was one evening out as opposed to an extra night out was how people were doing it, and I'd like to honor that for now. Um, there will be no policy committee meeting in December due to the um, winter break. Mm -hmm. Spurman Building Committee is meeting on the 18th in the Jordan Conference Room. And Buildings and Grounds has a meeting on Thursday at 2. Is it this Thursday? Uh, this Thursday yep. at 2, and I'm forgetting where it is, Howard. It will probably be in the high school, school, right? In the high school conference room. In the high school conference room. So this Thursday at 2 o'clock in the high school conference room. Any upcoming health and wellness in the next month or two? No, I um, spoke to all the principals and explained that we do want to give a report to the board and Jeff said he's got a lot to talk about, he's excited about it, but everybody understands that we're, we're, we're coming. Yeah. Okay, so before we move on to item 11, um, I want to take this uh, pause to 
just acknowledge the significant change in leadership um, and thank Elizabeth for her two amazing years of leading this board and the district in a really positive direction. Um, I think that you've done a lot of mending and healing and you're going to be a really tough act to follow so I hope that you let me lean on you from time to time but I want to thank you so much um, and it's been a, a really joy to work with you as your vice chair. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. so Elizabeth, I just want to say um, in all seriousness, you, you really have made my job here um, a lot easier by just being able to work with you. It's just been a really a, a very accessible and, and helpful school board chair. It's been a lot to me and uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so Elizabeth, you became chair when I came onto the board and you have just led this, this uh, board through some amazing adventures these past two years of accomplishing quite a bit. Um, so thank you for your dedication, um, your constant effort, and your willingness to serve with, without hesitation constantly and continuously. Um, and also, I would like to congratulate you, Susanna, for filling this role and stepping mm -hmm. in. I think it takes a lot of courage to not have been doing it, to step into that role. So thank you, um, and I have complete confidence that you will do a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. So, That's sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Here, here. I'd like thank to add, add my voice and repeat some of the things I had said earlier at the caucus, but I think it's actually really important, um, particularly in a public session. You know, a lot of what happens at the school board is, particularly at the chair's job, a lot of what we do is all public. A lot of what the chair does is invisible. Um, <clears throat> we've had a lot of um, visible challenges and a lot of ones that were not so visible. And every step of the way, things move smoothly. We all found uh, really uh, good consensus and um, I think met a number of the challenges uh, with flying colors. I think our school district is in a much better place now after two years of leadership and the things that we've done. And as someone said to me before, I was about a stage manager. <clears throat> when they do their job well, nobody notices. But I want to let you know that we are we noticed, and it makes a really big difference, and we appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to take the oh, am I not? I, I, start I was just going to say something. No, I just, um, I, this is my first year on the board, and um, you were a welcoming um, chair. You took time to help me kind of learn the ropes, and I really appreciated that. Um, never hesitated to uh, answer any question, and very accessible. Um, and I appreciated you, you know, it, we, the superintendent search has been um, has been a you know a long process and it's you know taken a ton of energy um, and I really appreciate that you you held us um, collectively to high standards um, that are, are, is what what is right for the students I think you have the students and the schools um, in the front of all the decisions that you made and I really appreciate that. Well, I want to thank everybody for the past two years of working together. I'd also like to thank Barbara and Joe. Um, it, it has been a tremendous uh, learning opportunity for me, and it, is, it has been a joy. And um, so I thank you. And I also want to echo Heather's sentiments that mm -hmm. I have every confidence in Susanna. Um, we have great leadership, and I'm excited for both Susanna and, and Heather going forward. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, number 11, may I have a motion? This should belong to Hope or Nasser, I think. Your first motion. <laughs> I motion that we adjourn the meeting. Second. Oh. Do you want to second that? <laughs> Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you report, you missed your report. We told you. Oh, okay. So, did somebody second? Did somebody second? second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? <laughs> Jeff, we just adjourned. We just adjourned. We just adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you were laughing. That's right. But no principal.